must see the governor. Administration Nairobi. Request month's furlough to study the native customs. Shenzi tribesmen. Now that Abyssinia is ours. Signed Crawford, District Commissioner Manika. call to the governor, Nairobi. Urge governor refuse Crawford's request for furlough. Rumors Shenzi trouble impending. One of Akubo. This maiden is old. It is our law that she may be bought for wife. Two men want, sir. Baruda is rich. He have plenty of money, plenty of cattle. He offers 100 shillingi. But Kipsang, who in Askia a soldier, he over 120 shillingi. Let me see your money, Kipsang. Fifteen, twenty shillingi. You need a hundred more. Where is the rest of your money, Kipsang? The king will give me shillingi. I see. All the time, one of the Kuba. He said the king will give him shillingi. Very simple. He wants an advance on his pay. If the king give you shillingi, you must pay back. That will take many moons. Wife on the Never Never plan. What? You'll be a poor man for a long time. A man who has a good wife, Bonham Kuba, is never a poor man. But Kip saying. If you buy her for wife, you'll want to stay in your house all the time. You'll no longer be a good Iscariot. To have wife is good. To have Mutoto is better. But first I am the king's man and a warrior of the Maasai. All right, Kipsang. You can have maiden for wife. Boy, Makuma, go ahead. <laughs> I owe you 100 shillingi. Put your moniker on that, will you? Right. I hope you realize that already about 50 years of your pay has been I owe you to Africa. Well, suppose the old man had bought the girl. Kipsang splits the old man's throat, and then we have to hang Kipsang. Yeah, I know, I know. And then we have two dead men and a widow on our hands. Sundown? Thanks.
best part of the day, sundown. Nothing more to do in a place where there's nothing to do anyway. Miles and miles of nothing to do. All these lions and giraffes and zebras all trotting about. I don't know how they occupy themselves. It's amazing. But of course, all this means nothing to you coming from Ottawa. Ottawa is the capital of Canada. Is it? Well, I get a bit muddled with all these wa names. Masa wa, kaha wa, kanu wa, wana maku wa. Roddy, you sent a message to Nairobi after mine, didn't you? What? You heard me. But as a matter of fact, old boy, I did. What do you say? Retreat. your territory why look for trouble what did you say to nairobi it's bad form to talk during retreat I'm Coombs, Nairobi, Governor's aide de camp. How do you do? This is Bert Turner. your Turner. How do you do, sir? Oh, I brought you a spot of supplies. For what? Caution. Just tightening things up a bit. All ready, sir. All right, you can take off, sir. Won't you come up and have a drink first? Thanks. As a matter of fact, I shall have to impose upon you for rather more than a drink, Crawford. I'm taking over here. Governor's orders. Shall we move back a bit? I suppose this is the answer to my wireless. I'm afraid it is, in a negative sort of way. There's no guard on the landing field, I notice. Let's take a walk around before dark, shall we? for years. He used to belong to Abu Kali, the Arab trader. He's dead. Oh. There's no outer fence around the post here. No sentry except the one in the keep. I had a boy take your things to your quarters, sir. Natives seem to come and go as they please. An Italian prisoner wandering around at large somewhere. We hardly regard Polini as a prisoner. Why? Call an instinct. The way I feel about a man. Are you running this post by instinct? You can put it that way if you want to. Polini was resident in Italian territory. He's a member of the enemy forces. Where is he now? Polini. Hello. Capitano Pellini, Major Coombs. Ah, my pleasure. My pleasure. Why isn't he in the lockup? We do lock him up at night, sir. Well, shouldn't he be locked up all the time? The man's a prisoner of war. I am not a prisoner of war. I give myself up, and that is different. He cooks for us. The food's pretty frightening up here. They don't capture me. I walk over. 
I say I do not believe in fighting. The fact that you surrender doesn't alter your status. No? No. Moreover, a prisoner of officer's rank cannot be forced to work in the kitchen. Work? You think they make me do this? I am an artist. To cook is my pleasure. Mm. It's a pleasure you will dispense with in the future. Put him under proper restraint. Yes, sir. From now on, you will receive the privileges normally accorded a prisoner of war. Oh. He's boss here now? Very well. Very well. I will take the dinner off the stove. Prisoner of war. I want a cause on credit, Per buck. Mayor? Help yourself. Coombs, from your Nairobi point of view, we may seem a little lax up here. That's putting it mildly. That's not what you came up here to tell me. Why are you here? Why do you want to go to the Shinzi country? It's new territory. I want to make friends with them. Is that the only reason? Something's going on. They're Native reckless. Native chatter, rumors. What about? That's what I'll find out by going up there. That's not our business. They don't bother us. The Shinzi are getting guns. They're being smuggled for them. Your instinct didn't tell you anything about that. Nairobi wants to see one of those guns. The Shinzi are outlaw natives. They're dangerous. If we go into their country and try to take a gun away from them, we'll have to fight for it. And that may start something that'll take a lot of stopping. Crawford? Nairobi must have one of those guns. I am ready. Oh, come on, Fellini. No, 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 no. I demand my full rights as a prisoner of war. Now I don't cook no more. I wish to be locked up. And if I am to be locked up, I demand a full escort. With soldiers. Four soldiers. With rifles and fixed bayonets. May I have a drink, please? Certainly. Thank you. Jan Kuypens. Kuypens? Kuypens, Kuypens. Where are you from? I've been up in the Habash Hills. I have instructions to hold anyone from Abyssinian territory until after Nairobi has invested. I can go into this Crawford now. Uh, you're not Italian. Oh, no. I'm a citizen of the Netherlands. I'm Hollander. Where are your papers? Here. I keep them by me. Papers are very precious these days, I think. Here's my passport, issued from Amsterdam. And you can see the date, it is still valid. The neurologist, uh huh? That's why I've been up in the hills. They are very rich, full of minerals. Oil. For whom were you acting? For the Italian government. Here. These are my permissions. Now the Italians are gone, I don't know what to do. So I come to the British. I wanted to go home, but I don't know how to get there. And even if I do, Holland is no longer free. Holland? Kuypens? I remember a letter. You took it with the rest of my things. of my home at Nayan Road, eh? Take me to the spring. Have you ever been in Holland? At Tulip time? Huh? 
Do you like tulips? No. The Netherlands are our allies now. Perhaps you could make your mineralogical report to the British government. I would like nothing better than that. Well, your paper is in good order. Thank you. I have many specimens in my camera load. I will prepare my reports and hand everything over to you. Tell me, did you come back through Shenzhen country? Oh, no. They would have killed me. I came around it. You heard no talk in the bush about the Shenzhen getting guns. Guns? Guns? That's real! Violet! Sweet! He's trying to get behind him. Right. Yes, Dang? You and Aaron go that way. And try and get a gun. Yes, Barnum Akuba. Send the gun, Buana Makuba. You're really a king's man, Kipsang. Czechoslovakia. How many Shenzi are there? I don't know, it must be thousands. I'm afraid this is what Nairobi suspected. What a filthy way to fight a war. I was listening. I heard what you say. What are you doing here? I am out of my honor. With the Shenzi prisoners, there's no room in the locker. I did not mean to listen. But it is something bigger than guns, I know. Before I was resident here, I was teaching in Milan on political history. But I teach too much, so they sent me here. More than three years I sit over there. I'm much alone, I read a great deal, and I study, I study a very great deal. I look beyond Africa and I think a lot. And if there is danger here, please, crush it. What are you trying to say? No, no, not what you think. Not military information. Thank you. 
There. Two-thirds of the world, water. Pacific Ocean, Atlantic Ocean, Indian Ocean. Who has the water has most of the world, yes? But there is a great plan, a geopolitical plan. Here in Africa is your key of everything. If you lose Africa, you lose the war, you lose the world. And the Chenzi gun, it is like the beginning of the end here. Like a sign. It is very simple. They hold the coastlines from Norway down. With Gibraltar stopped and the Suez closed, they come down to Aden and over to Dakar. It is on the land all the time, around the oceans. They never touch the water. By land they capture bases. Never do they go on to the sea. Where there is water, they leap. And always Africa is the bridge. That is why they have no navy. They travel around the oceans, around the world, by land. And if you do not hold Africa, there is nothing to stop them. All that water will be useless as tears. Think about it. Think much about that bay. Please excuse them when they about you. I know I look like a coward because I give myself up and do not fight you. But where there is power, there can only be one master. And I know what that means to my people, too. To all people. Polini. Would you waive your rights as a prisoner of war and cook dinner for us tonight? Ah, oh, you're very kind. Very kind. When I come out of the clink, I think how good it would be. You see, alone with my thoughts, I teach myself to cook. Risotto alla milanese, scaloppina alla marsala. Salad alla pallini? A salad alla pallini you shall have. Well, Crawford, it's a pretty frightening theory, isn't it? Mm-hmm. And pretty frightening evidence. <laughs> Shenzi out on the sand. Shenzi are not men of my house. I'm a trader from the north. A trader without goods? I come to Manica to buy. But you work with a Shenzi. I am lost. They show me the way. You know the law, Hamoud. That any man who carries a gun may be shot. I have no gun. But you bring guns to the Shenzi. No. guns and guns bring dead men to Shenzi. I don't, I do not know gun. I do not know Shenzi. The Shenzi are counting their dead. In the end, they'll lose their guns and count only many more dead. I'm not going to keep you here, Hammond. You can go. But they'll have word of this man who brings trouble to them and death to their houses. You shoot Shenzi. You want to shoot me? No, I don't want to shoot you. But when they have my word, they'll hunt you down and they'll kill you without shooting you. You'll die many times, Hamoud. Hello, Cook! Get out in the woods! Hamoud! Turn him loose. There should be a dead man in your house!
you should have put him back in the lockup. You can't blame a native for using a gun that's been given to him. I'm afraid Nairobi wouldn't agree with you. This isn't Nairobi, Major. This is Manika. And I learned a long time ago not to punish a native for a white man's crime. Hmm. You couldn't possibly have any doubts about this Hamlet. No, no, he's rotten clear through. But he's only a go-between. Our job is to find out where he's getting those guns. And that'll be a lot easier if he's loose. The natives say that Kipsang will die at sundown. How can they know? They always know. He's turned his face to the wall. On your arms, Left, turn, quick, march. Your orders are to search all caravans. These are just the usual travel and trading permits. Why do you come to Manika? To bring supplies for my stores. All these stores? Yes. 
We should have had a radio advice from the last post where your caravan called. That didn't happen. My caravan came straight up past Torcana. There's no radio there. That's not a regular camel track. It's nearer by two days' journey. What's on your caravan? You have the manifest. The usual trading goods and personal things. I'd hardly bring Shenzi guns into your post. How did you know we're looking for guns? Every native in the bush knows it. Zia? Yes? I am Pallini, Avocali's friend. When you were very small, we took you to the convent in Mongadiscio. Do you remember? It was your first day and you walked between us. I held your hand. There was a soldier with us. That was you. See. Si. I remember. Of course, and I remember. And now I see you again, grown up. Well, how are you? Oh, good, good, but not so good. Here I am a prisoner and today it is my birthday. Always there has been a party for Pallini's birthday, but now no birthday, no party, nothing. We'll have dinner with me anyway. Oh, that would be good, wonderful. Come at sundown. Sundown. Sundown for party, sundown for meeting, sundown, sundown for, for the, the glory, glory of Allah. Allah. Abu Kali used to say that. Arrivederci. Arrivederci. That is Abu Kali's daughter. Isn't she lovely and clever? From Cairo to Zanzibar, she has a network of stores, the Abu Kali stores. But since he's dead, they all belong to her. The largest trading network in all Africa. They are in every village, and all by herself she runs them. All the more reason we should watch her. See? Bill, why don't we give Pellini a sort of birthday party? Well, just a small one, of course. It's not a bad thought. We could invite everybody. You don't mean that. Tonight at my house. Oh, but that would be wonderful. We might even invite this, sir. Uh, Zia. Of course. I will bake a cake, a special one. You want me to tell Zia? No, I'll tell her. No, I think you better let Pellini do it. All right, I'll tell Zia. Oh, Discrimination may be all right down in Nairobi. Up here it's different. Zia's an invited guest. And when you invite an Arab to your house, she's only half Arab. Pellini says her mother was French. That makes her Chi-Chi, half-breed. Even the natives themselves discriminate against Chi-Chi. <laughs> Take this for the party. <laughs> for the party. How do you like the cake? Oh, it looks great. beautiful. Ah, you wait until you taste it. And thank you so much for the friends. Oh, ah, everything looks wonderful. This party, we shall make it a thing to remember. Excuse me, guys. Oi, Mari. Oi, Mari. One set up there, set up there. Presents from the men's crowd. Soon the men's crowd come. Thank you so much. So oh, much. wonderful. Thank, thank you, so thank you. <laughs> From the figs from Smyrna. Dates, preserved with brandy. The olives, icy ginger. Here's curry and sage. Garlic, oh. And to know that, first of all, I am a cook, I can hardly contain myself. That beautiful girl to think of my birthday. And this is honey with an inscription in Arabic. Arabic I cannot read. Read. Ah, you know Arabic. Eat the gift. 
to sweeten thy stomach and keep the dish to refresh thy memory. You are very clever, oh, Kuiper. What delicious words. <laughs> this is cherries. How do you do? I represent Mrs. Chorney, Chorney, and Cindy. This is Miss Zia. How do you do? Won't you come in? Good evening. Nothing completes a party like a beautiful girl. <laughs> you know Jan Kuypens? I don't think so. How do you do? Good evening. You like Kuypens? Yes, we met this afternoon. How do you do? And thank you so much for that basket with all those most gorgeous things. I'm pleased that you like them. I'm excited by them. This day would seem so sad for a birthday. It brings you here and we are having a party. You are going to cut the cake. And you will sit beside me in the seat of honor. Say, who put the tables like this? Why don't we have just one big one? Uh, we, we would if we had one. Where do you think we are, the Ritz? Well, who sits out there? I'm sitting there with Miss Zia. Your prime cocktails. I was born in Africa. I've lived here all my life. I know what this little table really means. Forget it. The England that's going to win this war is going to do away with a lot of the Nazis. Aren't you being a little ahead of time? Nope. I'm 25 years behind the time. There was a man here then that had the right idea about those things. Graham Fletcher. You know of him? He was a good friend of Abu Kali. I didn't have the good luck to know him. He said that, that Africa was a matter of love. I know what he meant. He always said that fear produces more fear. He said that force creates violence. But he said if a man really loves Africa, without fear or discrimination, she'd love him in return. And did she? I only know he loved Africa. He knew Africa. I believe he spoke 18 dialects and knew the people who used them. You see, Fletcher had a theory. He believed that the black men up here were like the soil. They needed care and cultivation. He wanted to irrigate these barren lands and build a, a garden of Eden. That's what he called it. You love that man. He's kind of a legend to me. He's buried out there under the boundary stone. When I first saw you, I thought you were very grim and officious. But I guess you're the kind of man who does his job as he sees it. That's right. Excuse me. Magabool. Where is everybody? Maybe they come later. Juana Macuba. What do you mean, later? Uh, later, Juana Macuba. Uh, maybe. Come on, you two, be sociable. This is Fellini's party. Let's drink his health. We're waiting for a drink. Hey, Brian. Never mind, I'll chase the drink up myself. Abdul. What's happened to him? All well, the boys seem to disappear. The dancers. Everybody's gone.
Dunbar is just a tall story. It's a sort of bush telegraph. No one knows how it comes to them, and only born natives can get it. And Habari's never wrong. Well, I don't believe it. A lot of rot. Well, all I can tell you is that one night when I was a kid, I woke up and heard my mother screaming. Later, we got word that my father was killed that very same night at Verdun. The natives would call that Habari. Bill. Zia has told me. Habari? See. Si. One of us six white men has an appointment. An appointment? When a man dies, the natives say that death met him. That is the appointment. And that's the Habari? See. Si. One of us six, eh? Well, that's ridiculous. There are only five of us here. Yes, that's right, isn't it? Well, since we've nothing to worry about, let's have that drink, shall we? said that one of us six white men here would die. There were five of us till you walked in. Well, that's pure coincidence. Coincidence? Well, Bari's one of Africa's mysteries. Probably what we call fate. Now, I had no intention of coming this way. I was up by Mulka and I ran into a herd of elephants. They've never been up that far before. One of them charged, and I shot and only wounded him. So I had to follow to finish him off. So I'm here. Coincidence. Well, the further I got this way, the more I heard the natives talking. The Habari's about you, Bill. They say there'll be a dead man in your house. That's that Somali you turned loose. But that's ridiculous. Well, then send us cars and round him up. Every native in and around the post is waiting to see what I'm going to do. That's why they're all so quiet. This has got to be handled in a way that they can understand and appreciate. I'm the one who has the appointment. Yeah. It's on you, Bill. We've got to set trap for trap. Give Hamoud a chance to do his worst and then strike back. I've already put a man on the machine gun in the tower. And keep everybody away from my house. And don't come near it yourself.
Maurice Manon. Oh, he went this way. I think he made a mistake and used tracer bullets. Yes. Wallach or Batten, Scotty. Rifles, no machine guns. Thought you told everybody to stay away from your house. I did. What are you talking about? See her. Was she here? No. What are you talking about? Find her out here in your veranda. She was shot. Shot? Here? Oh, she'll be all right. I took her home. Yeah. What was she doing here, do you know? I didn't ask her. Under the circumstances. shouldn't have been prowling around my house. I wasn't prowling. How bad is it? I said it was nothing. Suppose you didn't understand the strict order that nobody was to come near my house, including you. Graham Fletcher was killed by a man like him. What's that got to do with it? I didn't want it to happen again. Besides, I didn't want the natives to lose their Buana Makuba, their most excellent lord. Great symbol to them. You mean you came over to warn me that... To warn the Buana Makuba. May I come in? Well, did you get an explanation? She came over to warn us about Hamoud. And are you satisfied with that? Yes. Well, I'm not. You will leave Manika in the morning. But I have trading permits from Nairobi. All permits are cancelled. Trading is civil administration. That's my concern. If there's to be any discussion, Crawford, we'll have it somewhere else. You will kindly leave by the Wajir Camel Track with the rest of the traders. Report clear of the district to Ziciolo. Good night. What does this mean? I'll find out. I'm sorry, but perhaps Major Coombs is right. It isn't very safe up here just now. Of course, it was his way of saying that. You have to understand the British. I do understand them. Just as I understand that you are not a Hollander. I beg your pardon. Who are you going to get to replace Hamut? Replace Hamut? It was very foolish of him to use that machine gun. You were going to make him chief of the Shenzi. I really don't know what you mean. 
Comet was helping you distribute the guns. The Italians who were in Abyssinia were to have done that, but the British have driven them out. And now you have lost Hamut. You still have to distribute your guns. And I have the largest trading network in East Africa. My interest is to protect all that. And I can only do it if I'm on the winning side. And, uh, Crawford? What about Crawford? Well, what about him? I want to guard what is my own. Not lose it with the losers. Isn't that reasonable? Very reasonable. And, uh, very wise. All right. We leave here tonight. How soon can you be ready? In an hour. It must be sooner, much sooner. I'll come back for you. much hurt, no? No, no. I'm glad you've come. I want you to go to Bill Crawford. Tell him Kuypens is behind the Shenzi guns. Kuypens? My friend? Yes. Tell Bill that this is the center, the key, but that Kuypens has links with other districts. I think in Uganda or Tanganyika, but I'll find out. And I'm leaving here now. Where are you going? I don't know, but I'm going with Kuypens. I'm taking my caravans with me, and I'll use my camel men to bring word back. But I don't... Just tell Bill. No one else. Tell him in the morning. Please. And remember it all. In the morning. All right. I will remember. Good night. Mariani, did you see the Memsahib go? No. <laughs> she told me stay in house. Well, do you know where she's going? <laughs> One of the covers. <laughs> no. <laughs> Crawford. <laughs> Bill's taking her camels and all her camel women. So that's it then. You ordered her to leave, so she's gone with the rest of the traders. She didn't go with the traders. She went with Kuypens. They're both tied up with the Shenzi guns, using her trading net both to smuggle them in. I don't believe that. You can believe what they left behind, can't you? And last night we nearly had our heads blown off by a Skoda machine gun. That ought to convince you, Bill. Still doesn't prove that Zia's in it. Proves that we need troops to handle this thing now. Troops? You want to start a flare-up among the Shenzi? That's the one thing I'm trying to avoid. Well, if we have it now, we'll save further trouble later on. I'll go after Kuypens. Oh, it's too late for that, and it's too late for talking. Just a chance. If I go after them... After whom? Kuypens? Or the girl? When you go up to Shenzi country, it'll be with half a battalion of King's African rifles behind you. This is from Nairobi. Endeavor to trace alleged Hollander mineralogist known as Young Kuypens. If whereabouts known, advise administration. Enemy plan appears centered in Shenzi territory. K.A.R. reinforcements leaving Nairobi await further instructions. I'll report and wait for orders. Barry said one of us six white men.
Portuguese founded. They were the first white men to come up here. Labor. He wants to land. Magabo! Hold out your men, light some flares on the landing field. Yes, we want it. I'd like to report to you privately, sir. Oh, very well. You'll excuse us, Crawford. Yep. Find anything? It's about as I expected. What are you doing? Roddy, you got any of that good tobacco? Here, try some of mine. No, Roddy's got something special, thanks. Is there any left? Yeah, half a tin over at my place. Tastes a little of insecticide, but the ants are gone. Aren't these the mineralogical specimens Kuypens brought? Yeah. Black basil. Be a good fellow and get that tobacco, will you? Yeah, right away, man. Uh, what's this? Fused granite and quartz. Hmm. Frightfully interesting, isn't it? Well? It's all of volcanic origin. Just what you thought, huh? Could only come from one place. But give us half a battalion, sir, and we'll clear out the Shenzi country before Kuypens has time to start anything. Infantry, I didn't make myself quite clear. You can't have any troops. You can't even have one extra man. You've got to stop this with nothing other than what force you have here at the post now. Well, we've got about 40 years current, sir. Lieutenant Turner, and of course, Crawford. Crawford, I want to talk to him. He thoroughly understands conditions up here. Best commissioner we have. Come along.
Where is he? Crawford? Crawford? Where's Crawford? He was here a moment ago, sir. He asked me to get this tobacco and... Uh... Well, what were you going to say? Uh, looks like Dewey's gone too, sir. Dewey. How well did you know Abel Collie? Pretty well. He bought my first ivory. That was a long while ago. Uh-huh. You got any idea why Zia would have gone off as Kaipen? Nope. Maybe she didn't go willingly. She couldn't make that girl do anything she didn't want to do. Don't worry. See if we can find out what's in those lords. Sending stuff out already. Hey, those are Zia's camels. You see those little ones? And there's Hassan, the head camel. Coons was right, she's in it with him. But maybe he took her outfit over. Not everything, not camels and camelmen. Let's get out of here. Can you leave all this? There's too many here for us to tangle with. It'll burn. It'll all burn. <laughs> Looks like a powder can. Make me a fuse out of one of those gun racks. Shenzi? No. 
They look like Amara men or half castes. Like those guards on Zia's caravan. Looks like Holmes was right. It's too late for talk. That seaplane's got a radio antenna. If I could get aboard it, I could get a message out to Manika. It'd be pretty hard to get on it by daylight. We're taking a chance, though. Get the men out of the post. And don't forget those reinforcements are coming up from Nairobi. When anything goes wrong. You going back to meet Coombs and show him the way here. Go on. They are trying to be clever with me. Crawford met that caravan, and he burned the loads. Did he have a scarries with him? No. How should Crawford come to meet that caravan? You chose the route that it took. Yes. But somehow he knew. News of it could not have reached Monique. No. And Crawford couldn't have known what you and I intended to do. He couldn't have. Could he? I'm sure of that. I'm quite sure of that. Because I killed Palini before we left. You are not quite as clever as you imagine. I know all about you. You are not cheap cheap. You are not native. Miss Fletcher, Miss Graham Fletcher. Mother, Mariette de la Rue, died when you were two years old. Father, Graham Fletcher, friend of Abukali, who reared you as an Arab girl. Only just before he died did he tell you the truth about yourself. From the beginning I knew this. But I wanted the use of your network and your caravan. And I have that now. Not quite. There's one thing you've overlooked. When you use my camelman, you sent out seven messengers who will carry news of what is here. Henry, the seven cameramen are dead. Where's Dewey? Frank showed that he was with you. Get trackers, run him down. We found your caravan. It was loaded with guns, so we burned it up. Now, Kuypen has left you down here to try and get any information out of me. You're wasting your time. Tell your friend to let you out of here. Kyvern! Get her out of here! He won't let me out. Nairobi asked me to come to Monique. I suppose me. Nairobi asked you to join up with Kyvern. I played into his hands deliberately. Don't you believe me? I told you you're wasting your time. You can think what you like about me, but I've found out things that you need to know. I've seen their maps and heard enough to know their plans. The Shenzi are going to attack Monique. Not just one band, but thousands. They're gathered now, waiting for guns. Manika will be the signal for risings everywhere. And nothing will stop it once it begins. And it begins tomorrow. Do you understand? Tomorrow. I sent word to you by Pauline, but Kuypen's killed him. I sent word to you by my camelman, and he killed them too. 
And now I'm trying to tell you myself, and you're as stubborn as a fool. But you've got to believe me, because it's the truth. <laughs> Via? <laughs> Are you sure the attack starts tomorrow? In the morning. My other caravans will be here tonight. The headmen won't take orders from anybody but me. Hypens is only waiting for me to give those orders. After that... I've got to get to the wireless on that seaplane. Zia, can you send Habari? No. If I could get to those drums, I know how to send a war call. The villagers would relay it. They'd get it at Manika. Kaipen's here. Kaipen's here. Kaipen, are you prepared for Manika? I cannot be ready before tomorrow. You should be ready now. I have had complications. They are still waiting for you, here in the Yemen, to the south. The caravans will be here tonight. All weapons will be sent out and the attack will begin tomorrow without fail. Here are my orders. The Effendi has loads for my caravan. Don't let them take those loads. Don't let them use my camel. <laughs> Thank 
Hello, Bill. Bill, Roddy. Roddy, there ought to be some morphine in that medicine kit. Oh, I'm all right. I feel a bit cold. I'll get a blanket. Oh, thanks. Bit of wireless Nairobi. I'll send runners. She'll mean a promotion for young Parker. He's a good chap, Parker. You'll like him. Crawford, you carry on. And don't lose your ideals. You may not realize it. But they're the ideals of the church. And church folk. People of all churches. Pulling together. That's strength. That's all we need. People of faith. Pulling together. You know? My father was a bishop. He wanted me to join the church. And I chose the army. They're both the basis of civilization. The church holds it together. The army defends it. And the Crawfords make it good. Best time of the day, sundown. Hey, Roddy? Dearly beloved, my heart is too full today to preach the sermon that I had prepared for this visit as your bishop to the Church of St. Giles, where I once served as your rector. During those years of sweet communion, you often opened your secret heart to me, your problems, your hopes, your desires. They were mine. Today, I wish to open my heart to you. You will please give me the charity of your attention while I speak of one of the millions of those who have served God and country. Have you ever heard of Manika? No. It is a small, remote, rather shoddy outpost. And yet a thousand Manikas defended one by one, together means the salvation of Africa and all its people. Many men have died in these many Manikas, died that freedom, decency of deed, might survive. The young man of whom I speak lies dead in Africa. The young man was my son. 
fathers of my congregation, mothers of my diocese, mourn not for the brave. They live in the indestructible splendor of all eternity. Yesterday and in this church, I married two brave young persons who shortly will return to Africa to resume their life of service. They brought a message from my son, a scrap of paper, a little verse. No, a great blazing verse it is, a last word. A message from Major Coombs to his father, to all fathers. Hear this. Fly high your flag upon the hill. Keep bright your faith and hold until our England wins. As win she will. Who waits with faith? Wait.